Alright guys, what we have here today, we're going to be doing a disc conversion on the Civic Wagon. So first step, I have the e-brake cables and we're going to need to get to where they're at, which is underneath the sensor armrest or e-brake. So looks like we're going to have to remove the seat first, get to those cables, trace them underneath the car, and pop them out. Seats out. Ignore the mess. Now we gotta pull out the armrest. Underneath there should be the cables. After we get to the cables, uh, we'll probably end up jacking the car up. Um, putting a towel around the brake booster because we don't want leakage onto the engine bay. Then we'll proceed to removing the tires. Ended up needing to remove the seat to go ahead and get the bolts on the other side of the armrest. If you don't have an armrest, shouldn't worry about removing the seat at all. Um, how to undo the the e-brake uh, console and to be able to access those bad boys right there which we'll get to after we jack the car up. Remember jacking the car up if there's a stick shift always have uh, something in front of the tires brick, block, uh, wood and then jack it up. Alright so I kinda did the other side first to save you guys some time from watching me struggle I got a couple tricks that we can do to expedite the process. What you guys can't see is like all the tools on the ground. Uh, but that's okay. So you gotta take those lugs off. If you're like me and you're running adapters on your Civic, so we need to, on the other side, what I would suggest is not undoing the brake line or the e-brake all the way, only because we have to have it engaged to take this off and then we have to disengage it to take this off. So I'll show you guys. So I'll engage the e-brake. So that way it doesn't spin when I loosen it. It might still spin because I disconnected it just now. Cool. Do a star like pattern for everything, whether it's tightening and loosening. Never loosen the bolt all the way, you'll have a different pressure on one of the bolts. So loosen all four and then go ahead and take it off. One. Two. Four, set those off to the side. That's if, if you have uh, an adapter. We gotta take this guy off, which might take you some time. Uh, I'm sure, so now I'll loosen the e-brake so I can kind of 
uh, get that, but first, all I'm doing is hammering it in, trying to twist it. I think that one was, t I used that one to start it, because we gotta get that axle nut out. There we go. It's starting to separate it. Go. Careful not to hit your fenders. That would suck. Cool. This guy's off. Set him to the side. We'll need to keep him. Uh, gotta undo this guy. Make sure you redo him when you put the new one in. If you use a new one. Uh, I got new ones, but I might just return them. I don't know yet. It's always better to use new ones, so. I have one that fits perfectly, don't know where it went. So it's pretty deep in there, so we can just jam this guy in. Perfect. Same thing. This is a 32 millimeter. These guys are usually really tough to get off. So what you can do, what I suggest is uh, something I've learned over the years. One way to increase torque is to increase the, le the lever arm. So this is the jack, the jacks, uh, Pump. Make sure that's nice and even in there. Slowly apply pressure and then take it out. Keep the, keep the lever arm on it. And then once you feel like it's loose enough, you don't need that lever arm anymore. If it's rusted, my other side was rusted or corroded at least. I used a PB blaster on the, on the bottom. This, this one actually looks all pretty all good. So, now we gotta get this guy out. This is when you wanna undo the e-brake. <clears throat> one reason being, the, uh, the shoes on the inside will press outward and it'll stop it from moving. But if we disengage it, it's loose and won't have that problem. Well, all right, let's engage it while we put the bolts in. And then disengage only got to hit it out. Want to try to do them evenly. These are just two bolts that I got from the junkyard uh, with the uh, other with the e-brakes. There we go. Next one. Might might be stripped. Huh. Let's see if it's stripped. Yeah, this one. That one is stripped. But we can see it's coming out, so if we disengage the e-brake. If you have to do that by hand, I'm sorry. That's not going to be fun. Uh, have a screwdriver. Just to prolong our hands. Put it in and twist it. 
Nope. Put it in and pry it. Good. You're gonna have to do it side to side. All that pressure is from the the disc. So we got this thing off. The drum cover. Those two bolts in there. Now, this part, I don't know how. I actually got it off on the other side. I just kept pulling it. So he breaks this engage. Well, there you go. Just give it a nice little love tug. Um, so just in case we have to reuse this stuff, let's just not break it. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm not 110% sure on how to actually take this apart. So what I did on the other side was I just pressed this in, twisted it, that came out, put it in the drum cover. The good thing is, uh, my mechanic that normally does my stuff marks the dates. So this was 3-16-2016. So it's been quite, quite a while that I've had these. And they're not bad. They still got a lot of life left. Um, I'm just upgrading for the ease in the future. Because pretty soon my mechanic's not going to want to work on cars anymore. And I appreciate that. Careful with that thing spring loaded uh, next I did this spring kind of pull it pull it out here so you're gonna kind of twist it out take a couple tries I'm using uh, wire cutters just because they fit in there and it's easier to twist them while being in there. And the whole point of like doing this stuff at home is you gotta, sometimes you gotta change your game plan. So, gotta be careful. I would suggest wearing glasses. I should probably go put some on, honestly. Um, I'm just changing sides because I'm getting a little frustrated. Back to this the big one. Now the whole thing kind of just came off. Uh, Got to get the e-brake cable out of here. Uh, the way that I did that was got a screwdriver, held it really close, this bracket closer to the driver, the front of the car, and then kind of just like pried it up from the cable like that. Just grabbed it with some. Like I mentioned before, uh, get that line out at all costs. Um, I just got bolt cutters, cut, I cut the cable, um, didn't want to deal with it anymore. So now removing the e-brake cable on the wagon, the Civic wagon, 88 to 91, uh, or the shuttle or beagles, there's going to be four, there's going to be three 12 millimeter bolts, one on a trailing arm, uh, one in front of the gas tank, and then three 10 millimeters underneath where the e-brake goes into the interior. I've removed all of them except for this last one right here. After that, the whole cable, uh, I should be able to just slide it all out from the back underneath. Just like that. And then all the cables are on the ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the e-brake cables, set the new e-brake cables in, and then I'm waiting for the mailman to come bring the the rotors, calipers, and brake lines. So that's why I haven't disconnected the brake lines. I don't want to deal with uh, brake fluid leaking everywhere. Like I said, you have the drum, and the cover of it was those two 12 millimeters. Drill them in evenly. It comes out, undo the e-brake, then the cover comes off, and 
you're going to essentially take everything out. I started with the springs, and then you can do these four bolts there. Uh, the e-brake cable, you can do, there's a bracket on the brake line there. There's one in the back, behind this part, and essentially the e-brake is there. You undo those two bolts right there. There are those two, and slide that sideways and those will come out. And you just reverse everything putting it back in. What I did like was the, the new e-brake cable. Uh, you're not, maybe not gonna be able to see it, but it was perfect fit for the bolts. One bolt out here, there. One bolt inside, right underneath the uh, passenger footwell, and then there's another one up there by the, t the exhaust tank or the uh, the piping. The cool thing was that I did not need to drop a heat shield like when taking it off of a car. Um, these are the cables right here. I have one per side. They're off of a 1990 to 93 Integra coupe, and they were a little bit longer than the wagons so that's a good thing um, once I can get the brake lines in and the rotors and calipers I'll for sure make sure it's recording as I, I'll just do one side you guys can figure out the rest